Hello guys and welcome back to the channel, it's me, Teen Shallot, and today we're going to be talking about the new booming what if series on my channel. Today, we're talking about what if Deku was a villain, part 1. You guys, when I released part 0 to what if Deku was a villain, it was well received. You guys all asked, are you going to kill them all off? Yes. I'm gonna make this a dark series with a dark, dark timeline. And if you're wondering, is this Deku gonna be in the multiverse madness? Hell yeah, he's gonna be in that multiverse madness. So don't worry, if all you villain fans want this, I'll give it to you. So, let us begin. From where we last left off, Deku had just killed the number one hero All Might using his sacred gear, Inferno Drive or demonic overdrive and he was, he just killed us a lot of these he just slaughtered all these heroes so it was time for the heroes to lick their wounds it was after the usj and they went back the heroes could not believe it they lost so many people that day so many had just died for what nobody knows so here's who has died the female version of shoji died Kirishima died, female version. Fe uh, Mina died, Sue died, All Might died, Midnight died, Aizawa died. Yeah, I'm killing off a lot of people. This might be a short series, but eh, it doesn't matter. So, those seven people have died, guys. Unfortunately, yes, they did. It's okay. You know, um... We all lose people sometimes, you know, but that's okay. This this series, this is how the series is gonna progress. We might lose three people apart, or we might lose more than that. Depends on how far I want to go with this. So, it's now time for Deku's paw. I woke up after after that day where I killed all those people, all those fake heroes. I felt happiness, true happiness for once, that I finally accomplished something, something I knew that would really bring about change in this world. Some might say, you did the wrong thing. That's not how you're supposed to do it. But I don't care. As long as my, as long as what I do helps men, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. But it's time for me to stop monologuing. Let's just go and let's talk with the gang. I walk down the stairs and I see, I see the whole gang, I see all those men just getting ready to destroy all those women heroes. And I, and to say I'm happy is an understatement. I am giddy with excitement. I can't wait to show everybody how us men were treated like garbage every single day of our lives. So now, enough stalling. It's time for the next part of the plan. I go on the phone and I say, Real Steel, I mean Full Metal, we need you. And then the code word the man says, You mean that Full Metal? No, I mean this Full Metal. Meet up at the park at 0500 tomorrow. Yes, sir. So, Deku went off the phone. And he said, now it's time to start planning. He knew all their quirks, he knew all their weaknesses, especially Todoroki's. He knew how bad of a person Endeavor was. So, he, she, he decided to go, go after Endeavor first. While Endeavor was doing some hero work, he went after her. And he said, hello Endeavor, my name is the Grim Reaper. And now it's time for you to pay for your sins. Treating men like garbage every day, even your own husband. Your own husband killed himself because of you. you. Should be ashamed. How could you? How could you let this happen? I thought you were supposed to be the number two hero. The hope for all people. But looks like you're just like everybody else, caring about the money and that's all that matters to you. So I have a warning for you Endeavor. And this was all a pre-recorded message that Endeavor saw. You 
pick up the mantle of hero again. So help me, not even God will be able to save you from what's to come. Endeavor did, took this threat very lightly. She did not care whatsoever. She knew that this was just another of those threats that villains always make just because they have nothing else better to do. And so she didn't listen. That would be a mistake that she, that she would never repeat again. And after that, she went home. She saw Todoroki, started bugging him, and then saw her son. And started beating him, attacking him, hitting him all over. And Deku, Deku had the quirk we all know as all for one. Like I said, he took all for one's quirk. All for one's a girl, but he took her, her quirk at the last part. Which means he can give quirks and take quirks. And so, he decided to take a mission. He went to the Endeavor family's house. And he saved his son. Just kidnapped him or something. And put a ransom on him. And he wasn't surprised when Endeavor didn't even listen. Didn't even care that he was taken away. This infuriated Deku. And his son, Toya Todoroki. Toya is still here, guys. But Toya, he, you know, we all know as Dobby. So, Deku went and he gave Toya a quirk. And he said, this quirk can help you get revenge on people, those who have wronged you. Those who have treated you like trash. And at the end of the day, we're all family here. So you betray us. Don't forget, nothing can save you from what's going to happen. Understood. And he said, yes, sir. And so, here begins the adventures of Toya Todoroki joining the League. The League of Assassins. Just joking, guys. The League of Heroes. They're known as heroes to themselves. To others, they're known as villains. But, to the underworld, they're known as the League of Reapers. The ones who kill those who stand in their way. Mostly women, but some men who decide to defend their families. And so, Deku's final mission, his total mission, is to bring revenge onto men. To bring men back into the brink, into the heart of society. And he may sound like a fanatic, but only some fanatics can't even fulfill their dreams. But Deku, Deku can. And so, we leave this message off. Deku is now woke up the next day at 0500. He's at the park. And there he saw his partner, his best friend. Full Metal, not the Alchemist. And he said, Full Metal, it's been a while, hasn't it? How's your little harem going on? It's going on well, partner. I know you hate all women, but not all of them are bad. Trust me. You'll understand one day. I hope so, partner. Don't forget that. Okay, I will. Don't forget, you cannot treat any other woman. Great. I understand, partner. All right, Midoriya. That's not my name. My name is not Midoriya. It's John the Reaper. Okay, John. You ready to go? Yes. It's time, it's time to activate Treadstone. The cicadas. Are you sure, Deku? Are you sure, John? I'm sure, Full Metal. We gotta do this. We are now in the next stage of the plan. It's time to get forward, go forward. And so, Deku activated the Cicada program. And all the men across the world were activated. Men in different places with heroes. A lot of terrorists were activated. And they were take gunning down. They were following orders to gun down every female they saw that was a hero. If they were not a hero, then they were spared. But other than that, may God help their souls. Deku decided to be more brutal in this one and activated the weapons, the, the super soldier program. He was building a serum to make super soldiers to match his strength. And he had finally mastered it. Finally found the correct serum. So he decided that now is the time. The time to 
to let them all know who was the real master. We skip one week later. It's time for the UA Sports Festival. Now you may all be wondering, how did everybody else cope with the attack? Well, UA went under a lot of fire, close to being able to shut down with the amount of people blood that was lost that day. And the heroes were shamed. Nobody felt safe anymore. Men were taken to prisons but broken out from the Reapers themselves. The League of Reapers saved all those men that were wrongly accused and which helped their cause even more. Unwillingly, the women heroes just helped create more of the Reapers, helped seal their own fate. And so it's now time, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the great massacre of the Spe festival to begin. Now, we end up with, Go with Deku standing up at the edge of the arena. Bakugo and everybody, they're all mourning. Bakugo liked Kirishima, but then Kirishima died and Bakugo was alone again. Deku knew this and he knew that she did not deserve any love or any compassion. None of the heroes did. If they're all gonna be treated this badly, then they should have just died the moment they were born. Deku took this to even higher extremes when he went to his Hiroshima's funeral itself and desecrated it, peed all over it, and just ultimately destroyed it. It was at this moment that everybody knew true anger and fear of what this man could do. And Bakugo and Uraka were questioned along with U Izumi. Without all, one, without all Might, she was alone to figure out the secrets of One For All. Her training, she was able to unlock full cowling, but this is nothing to the user of All For One and Demonic Overdrive. And so, we now pan down. The UA Sports Festival is going the same so far. There's some filler characters to replace the others, but it was all going well. Deku decided to wait until the final battles of the UA Sports Festival. He knew this would be a smart choice, considering how everything has been going on so far. So, he decided to just say, here and now, he went up into the skies and said, Greetings, all of you. You may know me as the Grim Reaper, but to others, other men, I am known as a hero. Because for some of you, I may seem like someone evil, someone you wouldn't really trust. But my cause is just. I have never killed or never hurt anybody that mattered. All my didn't matter. Why he why she died. If she did matter, she would have been alive right now. So, I give you all a message right now. Those who are willing to run, run away. Those who are willing to fight, fight. But at the end of the day, make sure to keep your all your eyes open. Because you won't get another chance like this to move away from this attack. So, as my final warning, I say, or my final words, as you may think, screw you guys. And so Deku finished his speech and just ran off, and he said, All right, men, start the attack in three, two, one. And they started the attack, and they went and they started, you started launching preemptive strikes and killing every single woman they saw and they even started killing men as well that were protecting their families and many people were dying left and right left and right it was an unending massacre all the students could not survive this attack they were being killed even so sue died again actually wait did i make her die you know i'm gonna just i'll just check 
Okay, yeah, I'll just say some more new faces. So basically, Jiro died, Momo died, Kaminari died. <laughs> I am killing off all your favorite characters. But don't worry, the best is yet to come. Because this is a story about Deku as a villain with my own imagination to it, my friends. So if you all disagree with how this is going, tell me. But ask yourself, if you were a true villain, wouldn't you stop people, wouldn't you stop future enemies from ruining your plans? You tell me right now. Cause if you don't, well, I might not listen to some of your requests. Now let's just continue on with it. So Deku basically went up to Bakugo, and Bakugo right now was fighting Uruk at the final battle, and he started beating her up. <coughs> he just destroyed her. He went, didn't even use demonic overdrive. He said, "Copy of one for all, full cowling, 500%." And then he went and jacked the whole stadium so hard it collapsed. Whole stadium was destroyed. Like as if there was a gigantic cell Kamehameha on it. And so, Deku went up to her and he said, Do you remember me now? Kachan? And she said, Deku? Is is that you? You you bastard! How could you kill all these people? What have you done? You're such a you're a monster! No, Kachan, you're the monster here. While you were just abusing me, hitting me, and bullying me, you should have wondered, why did I kill myself? And why was I never found after that? I could have been alive, but did you look? No, you just thought I was dead and thought it was good riddance. But I got something for you, Kachan. I want to tell you something. You're nothing. You're nothing special, Kachan. <laughs> you're you're just a piece of trash. And if you think that you can beat me, Kachan, Kachan, Kachan. I'll break your spirit so bad that I'll break your arms and then your legs and I'll break your ribs. I'll crush your heart and I'll keep you alive. Then I'll eat your living. I'll eat all your guts and I'll sp then I'll take you to my dungeon and I'll torture you every single day and I'll keep you alive and alive and alive and I'll break your spirit. And then, then I shall grant you death because I am a god and I don't give you my permission to die. <coughs> now fight me, you piece of beep. And then Jakku went forward summoned his sword and he said prepare for the tor prepare for the torture of a lifetime cuz i'm about to torture you so bad you'll wish you were never born and he st first stabbed her kneecaps both of them cut off her legs and he stabbed her arm and cut off her arm too stabbed the other arm cut it off and then he went forward and he twisted his sword inside her stomach it went forward upward Cutting her in half, he healed her again, cut her in half, healed her again, cut her in half, and this was going back and forth, back and forth. He could not deal. Deku was doing so much torture that it was unbelievable. And so, that day, Bakugo was, was tortured, broken. Never able to become a hero again. Faced with that much torture, what can you expect? She was brutally killed over and over again and brought back to life. This would usually kill a normal person. But she is not normal. She is a monster. She had a sacred gear too. But... What they didn't know was that Deku could take sacred gears as well. So he reached inside her body, took out her soul, and crushed it with his hands. 
and took her sacred gear and put it inside of him. And boy, was he lucky to know. This sacred gear hated women as well. And just always wanted to be on the side of men. But was never able to enjoy that. And so he had, he went and he communed with this sacred gear. And it said, my name is Nova. Nova Shenron. I don't really like all this abuse and bullying that you have went through. So I grant you my power. And I mix with your sacred gear. With the demon himself. And I call you Master. Now unleash our power and let us destroy this world so we shall rule over it together yes yes my sacred gear my brother nova we shall rule this land together <coughs> said said conan he was inside this guy so guys you won't believe it but my high school DXD OC is Deku's sacred gear. He has a demonic sacred gear. And he has the power to rival even the Satan class devils right now. And he has only trained for two, three years. And he is that powerful. And so, I warn you all. Be prepared for what happens next. Because now... We only have three parts until this thing is finished. But if you guys want me to continue it, go make it go into Multiverse Madness, then tell me now, or else it may not happen again. So I, I bid you all farewell. And this is the end of episode one. The, the beginning of the end.